Today is the deadline to register to vote in Oregon. With just weeks till November's general election, we're getting a closer look at the state's measures on the ballot. NBC 5's Anthony Carter has more. Shelly, there's four state measures that voters will weigh on this fall. The most controversial is Measure 114 on gun laws. We've covered that several times already this fall, but tonight we're looking at the other three, which focus on health care, outdated language in the Constitution, and holding legislators accountable. With election season just three weeks away, new statewide measures are being considered that take aim at the state's Constitution and elected officials. Measure 111 will add affordable health care as a fundamental right to the Oregon Constitution, similar to K-12 education. Portland Democratic State Senator Lou Frederick says he's always been supportive of health care for all. We need to do something in terms of affordable health care. I mean, I, uh, watching, watching relatives and friends struggle with um, the cost and the... Um, the ability to deal with affordable health care. However, MEFR Republican State Representative Kim Wallen argues that if passed, they will have legal challenges. She adds that the impact will be different for each community. What it means exactly is very confusing. It's very undefined. I think it's going to be rife for litigation and it's potentially rife for huge income tax increases. Measure 112, if passed, will remove language from the Oregon Constitution that allows slavery or involuntary servitude as criminal punishment. Frederick says this is something that's continuing to be looked at on a national level. This was done and used in the Jim Crow South and across the country to basically, as an excuse to, to hold on to and to stop people from being, uh, once again uh, being full citizens. Measure 113 would disqualify state legislators from seeking re-election if they have 10 unexcused absences from any one legislative session. It comes after Republicans walked out of Salem in recent years, even fleeing the state to delay the passing of bills by Democrats with the supermajority. Democrats in other states have also done it. Wallen's not completely against the idea, but believes the measure is not the best way to fix the perceived problem. In Oregon, we require two thirds to be present for quorum. So if they don't like, if, if people don't like the quorum requirements, they could change the quorum requirements, but this leaves it vague. But Frederick thinks something needs to be done to keep legislators on the job. They decided that, that the only thing that we're gonna do is a strategy to stop things rather than work and, 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 and get something done for the people of Oregon. To find out more about statewide measures and bills being considered in your area, you can visit the Secretary of State's website. You can also find our previous stories on Measure 114 on our website. That's KOBI5.com. Live in studio, Anthony Carter, NBC5 News.